Living in Milwaukee is just a fantastic place. The people of Milwaukee are very warm-hearted, caring individuals. They are hard-working people that really want to help each other out. I've been a firefighter for uh, 25 years. My father was a Milwaukee firefighter. And that drew me to the fire service just from watching my, what my father did. Well, I think the main reason I became a firefighter was to follow um, in, in my brother's and my father's footsteps. It's a great way to serve the city where you're helping other people, you're making a difference. As firefighters, you know, you're constantly always on, on duty. There is no true day off. You're always aware of the situation, of your surroundings. If people need a helping hand, we're there, you know, to, to lend that hand. My wife, Angela, and uh, my daughter and son, DJ and BB, and they were going to a park. They were going to try to find a park to play while I was at work. That's when the accident happened. Well, from what I know, Angela said that she just closed her eyes for just a minute. Uh, she didn't think she was that tired, but the next thing you know, she woke up and she saw the tree. And it happened so fast. I got a phone call from my wife while Joel and I were drinking a couple of beers on my deck. It was a call that, because of her tone, I knew it was very serious. It was four phrases that I remember. John, car on fire. Anybody got a fire extinguisher? People trapped. There's a baby in here. Hurry. I drove actually right up on the on the scene, and my brother and I, you know, I put the car in park, and then that's when we realized that, you know, there was another person trapped, and that person being DJ. There was a group of people around the vehicle. Uh, There's a few individuals trying to break the windshield. Actions that n most normal people would not be doing. Is someone calling that one? Our hearts sunk because of the amount of fire. They did not have much time or. They may have been already too late. Jump on. Come on, Peter. We jump out of the vehicle. I thought, what I thought was somebody trying to get into the vehicle uh, was actually Angela making her way through the front windshield. And when I initially got on scene, I actually threw her out of the way to let, to say, hey, let me do my job now. I saw that the windshield, the front windshield had enough of an opening I was able to get my hands in and I was able to peel the windshield forward so that way Joel made the initial entry into the vehicle. I was able to get in and, and see DJ and you could definitely hear him screaming at that point and that's when it became, you know, an urgent, urgent matter. There's a baby in there! John, car on fire. Anybody got a fire extinguisher? People trapped. There's a baby in there. Hurry. And we could actually see where DJ was. We could see the fire impinging upon him. DJ was in his booster seat, and he was uh, essentially pinned in because of the seat belt. It was difficult for us to locate. Uh, typically, what we try and do is look for the seat belt harness to, to release him. We both struggled to look for that. I could not locate the uh, seatbelt release to get him out. He was locked in place. DJ literally was on fire, so you know, seconds were of the utmost importance. We're seeing a little boy burning alive. That's when uh, I came out of the vehicle and realizing that I needed a knife to cut this seatbelt. Come on! Give me a knife! Give me a knife! Come on! Come on. Up until this time, DJ is screaming like you would not believe, and understandably so. Um, for a short time, it went silent. And at that moment is when I thought we had lost DJ. And all of a sudden, I hear him coughing and crying again. So then I knew, OK, he's still alive. I need to get back in there. To this day, I don't know who the individual that gave me the knife. An individual said, here, take this. I looked at it. I said, yep, this will work. And I went back into the vehicle. I grabbed a dry chemical extinguisher 
and try to suppress the flames as best I could. When I entered the vehicle with the knife, now they hit me with this extinguisher. I can't see anything. You know, it's just a cloud of yellow, white smoke, and I just feel for the seatbelt. I cut the seatbelt. I grab DJ by the shoulders, and I pray, I hope you're coming. And as I moved back, DJ pulled out of the, the seat, and I was able to bring him on out. As firefighters, we're trained as EMTs also. And it's amazing how that training kicked in from we went from a rescue mode to now I need to treat a patient. I was able to use my ability as an emergency medical technician so that we could start the cooling process of DJ's skin. We waited probably less than a minute for the emergency crews to arrive. Uh, paramedic unit came, they took DJ. It wasn't until then that we realized how badly burned we were. I received uh, first and second degree burns to my uh, arms and hands. Joel uh, sustained second and third degree burns. I never gave it any second thought. It was saving a life is all that mattered. DJ suffered, you know, first, second, third degree burns. He sustained 30% uh, uh, burn to the top of his head and the back of his shoulders and his arms and his hands. Uh, he's gonna have to have surgery until he stops growing, until he's 18 years old. He has a long recovery ahead of him, but I think he's gonna be okay. You know, obviously John and I have a very special bond with DJ and his family. And uh, anytime, you know, we can spend some time together, it's very nice. Give me a high five, DJ. High five that boy. They're like brothers to me now. They're like my family. Um, they've done so much to help us. And uh, DJ knows them as Uncle John and Uncle Joel. It's nice to get together, and I know DJ enjoys the firehouse. Why don't you come on this way? I'll show you the, my driver's seat, okay? He wanted to come see the fire trucks. He loves visiting with them. He loves playing with them. They just, I mean, they, John and Joel are like, like the second dad to them. Go ahead, hit that up. You hear that? When you watch the video, you're going to notice those 20, 30 individuals, and, and what it says about you know, the people of Milwaukee. The community of Milwaukee pulled together. They were caring people that wanted to save a life. And they were willing to put their lives in danger and greater risk to help this little boy out. Without their actions, it may not have been the same outcome, even with Joel and I being there. For me personally, they're my heroes. Well, if John and Joel hadn't have been there, uh, my family would have burned up in an accident. If it would have been another second or two, DJ wouldn't be here. I mean, that's how fast everything happens. I call them heroes all the time, but they tell me they're just doing their job. They know that I love them dearly and that I care about them. They, they didn't hesitate at all. They just went to it and did it, and that's what makes them heroes to me.